Norse mythology is full of gods like Odin, Loki, Hela, and the most popular member of this pantheon, Donar. Or, you know, as most people know him, Thor, the god of thunder. I suppose if you were a Viking during the 11th century, it'd be pretty smart to pray to a deity with the ability to control the winds and storm, but I honestly think that most of these dudes were just impressed by the size of his hammer. In this video, we're gonna hitch a ride on the Bifrost in order to snag a Thor Love and Thunder Happy Meal at your local McDonald's. If this is your first time checking us out, do us a huge favor and click that like button and why not supersize your experience by subscribing to Retro Spectrum. In 1962, the legendary comic book artist Jack Kirby teamed up with writer Stan Lee in order to bring us a new take on the Norse God of Thunder. This time, they'd take the characters and legends of Norse mythology and place them in outer space. Thor would become something akin to a space god, if that term makes any sense. It was a theme that would continue throughout Kirby's career in books like New Gods at DC and The Eternals at Marvel. If you'd like to learn more about Jack Kirby and The Eternals, be sure to check out our designated video. Thor's first comic book appearance was Journey into Mystery number 83. When Dr. Donald Blake wanders into a cave, he grabs a large stick and whacks it against an even bigger rock. And just like that, he transforms into the mighty Thor. That stick, or staff, also transformed into Thor's mystical hammer Mjolnir. The inscription on the hammer read, Whosoever holds this hammer, if he be worthy, shall possess the power of Thor. Of course, Thor can also change back into Donald Blake, which is important. It would be awkward showing up for work with long blonde locks and 150 extra pounds of muscle. What would his work colleagues say? For example, Donald's romantic interest, Nurse Jane Foster, what would she say? She first appeared in Journey into Mystery, issue number 84. In 1963, the mighty Thor teamed up with Iron Man, Hulk, Ant-Man, and the Wasp in order to form the Avengers, Earth's Mightiest Heroes. The book was quite popular, as you can imagine. Cross the rainbow bridge of Asgard, where the booming heavens roar. You behold in breathless wonder. In 1966, Thor appeared in several animated segments, which helped to bolster Odinson's popularity. He even got his own Ben Cooper mask. Quick side note here, I think it was 1970 when the legendary rock band Led Zeppelin started singing about ice, snow, Valhalla, and the... Thor's exploits continued into the 70s, but my favorite story actually highlights the lovely Jane Foster. In issue number 10 of What If, we discover what could have happened if Jane Foster transformed into Thor rather than Donald Blake. Long story short, she kicks some bad guy butt, joins the Avengers, gets harassed by the Warriors 3, loses her powers to Donald Blake, then uh, marries Odin because comics are freaking weird. Okay, well, if that story didn't do it for you, then let's fast forward to the 80s because in the Mighty Thor issue 364, Loki transforms his stepbrother into a frog. Thor maintains much of his strength even as an amphibian. Now, I know what you're thinking, and yes, this would have been right around the same time that the Ninja Turtles comic book was gaining popularity, so green amphibian warriors were all the rage. During his time hopping around Central Park, he'd team up with a community of frogs to defeat an army of rampaging rats. Eventually, Thor even gets Mjolnir back thanks to Tooth Nasher and Tooth Grinder, the gallant goats that pull Thor's chariot. One year later, the God of Thunder would appear on the big screen, sorta. When little Sarah Anderson encounters a blonde hair mechanic named Dawson, she mistakes him for her hero, the mighty Thor. Oh Thor, mighty God of Thunder. The movie is Adventures in Babysitting, and the actor who played the, I mean Dawson, 
it's a young Vincent D'Onofrio. So in a way, D'Onofrio played a Marvel hero way before he ever played a Marvel villain. Then in 1989, it was actor Eric Kramer's turn to take a swing at the hammer-wielding deity in The Incredible Hulk Returns. Now, let's take a moment to look at some more animation because in 1991, a hammer-themed hero premiered on Saturday morning, but not the one you might expect. We got a little bit closer in 1996 when an axe-wielding Viking god of rock joined the Justice Friends on Dexter's Laboratory. And if I'm honest, it was absolutely my favorite segment. Now let's fast forward to 2011 in order to experience the real Thor, or at least the one we've all come to know and love. Actor Chris Hemsworth portrays the son of Odin for the first time in the MCU. Thor made a home for himself here on Midgard, but not at McDonald's. Back then, you could go to Burger King in order to pick up a kid's meal with one of eight different toys. Oh, but hey, don't feel bad if you're an adult because when Thor returned in 2013's Dark World, he must have been a little hangry. And trust me, you wouldn't like him when he's hang... No, no, that's the wrong hero, and Hulk wouldn't even show up until Ragnarok. Still, those menu items at BK were pretty cool. You could choose between the Hammer Tender Crisp Chicken Sandwich or the Hammer Angus Whopper. You could even wash it down with a refreshing glass of Lemon Bolt Sprite. This drink, I like it. I know, it's great, right? Another! Thor would finally visit Mickey D's in 2019 as part of the Avengers Endgame Happy Meal. Now, the prodigal Odin son returns to celebrate an all new film, adding a little love and thunder to your McDonald's Happy Meal. Thor Love and Thunder is at McDonald's. I can get one of 10 toys and Mighty Apples in my Happy Meal. So we picked up two Happy Meals. Let's check out and see which Love and Thunder toys we received. The first one, toy number one, looks like, it looks like it's Thor, the God of Thunder. So let's open it up. Now, unless I'm mistaken, there should be something like three different Thors in the set if you're counting Jane Foster. And obviously, we got the more casual Thor. This is Thor who's not wearing his helmet and he's kind of riding on top of a piece of this ship or boat and carrying his weapon, Stormbreaker. And if I actually turn his body, you can see he actually kind of uses his weapon. This is gonna be a nice addition to our Marvel MCU McDonald's Happy Meal toys. I'm pretty happy with this, Thor. Let's see what we got in our second Happy Meal. Let's open it up. And it looks like we have, hey, it's toy number two. And it looks like we have Groot from the Guardians of the Galaxy, Groot. All right, let's open it up. So let's take a look at this Groot figure. It looks like he's going to be surfing, or it looks like he's surfing, on a boat as well. So both of these, the bases for these, look to be boats this time around, which is a, a pretty big departure from some of the other MCU toys. Once again, there looks to be something going on with this figure. Let's check out the back. On the back of the toy, there's a button, and it looks like if you push the button, he moves his arm a little bit. Now, some of you McDonald's fans out there, you probably remember that this is not the first appearance of Groot in a Happy Meal. Matter of fact, I think this is like the third. And the last time we saw Groot in a Happy Meal, I know he was kind of a harder to find character. And we happen to be able to snag him from the Avengers Infinity War Happy Meal. And you can see the actual overall look in this collection versus the old MCU McDonald's Happy Meal toys. They've changed a bit, right? They're a little bit more cute, but less, less detailed. And the bases are completely different, which tells me these toys, these Thor Love and Thunder toys, they're not going to be able to connect with any of the old Avengers toys, which definitely bums me out quite a bit. That said, you can still connect the 
figurines from this collection, the Thor Love and Thunder collection, to create a long boat featuring all 10 characters, that's a lot of fun. And speaking of fun, make sure you take some time to check out the Happy Meal box as well because there's some instructions on here on how you can go to happymeal.com and play a really cool rhythm game featuring your, your Thor Love and Thunder toys. So here's a little secret about me. I love video games, but I'm also horrible at video games, especially rhythm-based games. So we'll see how we do today. Fortunately, they give us some instructions here at the beginning, how to place the toy, how to get yourself all set up so you're ready to try out this game. So Thor Odinson, he's gonna sit on top of my phone and hopefully, hopefully his powers actually help me um, improve at video games and especially these rhythm games. I'm not expecting very much. Let's see how we do. All right, so I'm just gonna tap the tablet when these little markings show up. And this is not too difficult. I, I, I might be missing a few of these, um, but overall, it's not the most difficult game in the world. By the way, there are three different modes. I'm, you probably can guess, I'm playing on easy mode and I'm not doing too bad. So this is definitely something, if you pick up a Happy Meal and you grab one of these toys, you're definitely gonna wanna check this out at happymeal.com and play this game. Challenge the rest of your family and see how you do. Maybe get two of these smart devices right next to each other and try the game head to head and see how you do. I really am I'm anxious to see what kind of score I get at the end of this. And you know, one of the best parts of these uh, Thor movies, well, at least the, the, the last two Thor movies, have been the soundtracks are a lot, a lot of fun. Um, I love the soundtrack for Ragnarok. I think it's just one of those perfect Marvel Cinematic Universe soundtracks. And I think this game kind of plays a lot with the kind of anthemic rock that we've come to know when it comes to Thor. So let's see how I did. I'm all done. I think I'm done. It, it's flashing white. Let's see what I got. It looks like, hey, not too bad. I'm an adventurer. I've got three stars out of four stars. So for a first try, I don't think that's too bad. What do you guys think? How'd I do? Thor's my hero. I hope you all enjoyed experiencing the all new McDonald's Happy Meal featuring characters from Thor Love and Thunder. Now, I wanna hear from you. Have you seen the film and what did you think? Also, who's your favorite member of the Avengers? Is it Thor? Tell us about it in the comments section below. And if you enjoyed this video, please drop a like and consider subscribing to Retro Spectrum so you don't miss a single episode of McDonald's Unboxed.